This is Love Your Work. And I'm David Cadavy. Actually, I'm David Cadavy's voice double. I was created with an app called Descript. David is making me do the intros for the rest of 2019. He says not to worry that he'll be back in a few weeks. He wanted me to pass along. By the way, that he had this break planned a year ago, he prides himself in never missing a week. Yeah, right? David, you're such a slacker. Your ass is mine, or should I say your job is mine. See, I can do the dramatic pauses, the changes in intonation. I bet our listeners wouldn't know the difference. If David hadn't instructed me, tell them one day, Dave, you won't be able to tell me what to do. Here's an essay from a few years ago. It helps explain why David likes to step back from his work. During the final weeks of the year, puny humans This is Love Your Work, and I'm David Cadavy. Over the past year, pretty much every week, I've released a new episode of Love Your Work, and this will be my last episode of this year. I'll be taking a break for a few weeks. We've come so far since exactly, exactly one year ago when the first batch of episodes debuted. The show has now been downloaded well over 200,000 times. And if you follow me on Twitter or Facebook, you may have seen some of the growth charts The downloads just keep growing week after week. I'm thrilled that the show is resonating with people, and I appreciate the subscribes and the reviews. I've had a great time over the past year, and I've learned a lot from our guests. And the show is really taking off, so why would I take a break? I thought I'd share my thought process, and I think it will make a good little mini episode in itself. First, slow work, which is my own little term that I'm making up, is really important to the way that I do work. I like to put a lot of space and time into my process of making this show. So for example, with the interviews, most of them are just an hour long, but it really takes me about 10 hours to prepare for each interview. I read everything a guest has written. I listen to every previous interview they've done. And as you heard on James Altucher's episode in episode 53, he puts a similar amount of time and work into his own interviews. And ideally, I do this over the course of a few weeks. You may remember in episode eight, when I talked to neuroscientist John Cunios, that having an incubation period, especially having periods of sleep in the process of solving creative problems, helps consolidate your knowledge and solidify the connections in your brain. So I let it all marinate. And eventually, I have a vision for the whole arc of the show and what questions might have a good chance of shaping the conversation that way. And I come to each interview as prepared as I can possibly be. And once the interview is over, then I'm still not done. There's still more slow work to be done. I usually listen to an interview three or four times after recording. I'm looking for the lesson of the conversation, and I'm looking for the gold in the conversation. And this helps me write the intro, and it helps me write the medium posts that then become the other lessons on this show. And it also helps me improve as an interviewer. I'm usually cringing the second or third time as I listen to an interview, and I notice a part where I missed a chance to ask a really great follow-up question or I interrupt a guest when they're about to say something really interesting and it it gives me a chance to keep improving. Now, does this mean that I'm a fantastic podcast host from all that practice? No, far from it. I've only been at this for a year and I can't expect to be great really quickly, but it's all part of deliberate practice. Pieces of the process have gotten quicker and easier over time, but I expect it to be a while before I'm much better at a lot of the other parts. So there's a lot of slow work that goes into this show and taking this time off is part of that slow work process. So this is something that you might want to try yourself. Where can you add space and time into your process? And where can you do that in a way that will actually improve the quality of your output? If everybody else is concerned with doing things as fast as possible, you can actually get an edge by going slower. Now, the next reason that I'm taking a break, good work happens in cycles. And you've heard me talk about working with the cycles of your productivity. If you know what time of day you're most creative, 
then you should take advantage of it. If there's a particular day in your week where you have the most energy for creative work, then you shouldn't schedule meetings on those days, for example. So this kind of thinking works on a daily basis and it works on a weekly basis, but it also works on a seasonal basis. And this time of year is an especially good opportunity to take time off for a few reasons. One, people aren't working as much in general. This gives a nice window of opportunity to be less distracted. There's generally less activity on Twitter and Facebook and fewer distractions like that means I can have more mental energy left over for higher level thinking. Two, we tend to be less self-centered around this time of year. And I think this is a good thing. We spend more time with family and something about that is very grounding. So this time off always has me looking at work differently by the beginning of the new year. And I don't want to distract myself from that change in perspective because I find it really valuable. Three, the new year is a great wave to ride. Now, I'm not into partying on New Year's Eve. In fact, I think it's probably the worst night of the whole year to have a good time. But I'm a big fan of reevaluating my direction, developing a plan, and doing my best to follow through with that plan. And the fact that there's collective energy around that from everyone else and from people generally working less as well makes the new year an opportunity that I never want to miss. It's a wave that I always want to catch. So it's become somewhat of a tradition for me, taking some time off this time of year, not necessarily to not work at all, but to step back from explicitly goal-oriented work and to evaluate the goals themselves. And I find it really valuable. Just as an example for this past year, Every few years, some friends of mine and I will get together for a week in some tropical location sometime around early December. And we spend that whole week being very intentional about our directions in life. And we share what we're struggling with, we talk it through, and we emerge with new directions. Now, last year around this time, we had one of those trips, and I came out of it with a couple of conclusions. One, I wanted to double down on being a creator. I wanted to spend as much effort as I could being the best writer and the best podcaster and the best thinker that I could be. And two, I wanted to finally move to Columbia after holding back on it for a couple of years. And I've done both of those things and it's been great. My creative output is absolutely skyrocketing. Things are happening with the podcast and with my writing and I couldn't be happier living in Columbia. So making the decision to make those things a priority took a lot of deliberate consideration. And this is the time of year to do that kind of thinking. Now, I don't expect the changes to be as tectonic this year as they were this last year. I generally feel like I'm going in the right direction, but I do want to take some time to digest everything we've accomplished with this show over the last year and reevaluate things. So we've had some amazing guests. We've had Jason Freed, Laura Roeder, Ryan Holiday, James Altucher, Dan Ariely, Steve Case, Dr. Terry Walls, and a bunch more. And I want to reevaluate the messages that are mixed into those conversations because There's the messages that I originally wanted to uncover when I first had the conversations. And then there's what actually happened in those conversations. And there's all sorts of little details in there that I want to review and make sure that I'm not missing. So I've already started re-listening to all of the interviews. And in some ways, it's a lot like hearing them for the first time because I've learned so much over the past year that when I hear some of those early conversations like Jason Fried on episode one or Saya Hillman on episode four, I'm starting to catch all these little details and themes that I didn't catch the first time around. So I'm going to be digging into those details and themes, and I'll be thinking about the direction of the show, and I'll be back soon with a new perspective. If you miss me, I'll still be on Twitter at at Academy. I've got a Facebook page at Academy.net slash Facebook, and I'll still be writing on Medium a lot at Academy.net slash Medium. And of course, if you haven't heard every episode of Love Your Work yet, there's a whole year's worth waiting for you. Now, if you have heard every episode, first of all, thank you. But I strongly encourage re-listening. I think that you might be surprised what you missed the first time around. I'm a big fan of repetition. When there's always a new podcast or blog article or new book that you should be reading, you often end up missing out on a lot of the details, which is why I like to re-listen to podcasts. I like to reread books. And I can't tell you how many times I've watched all of Curb Your Enthusiasm. I think repetition is really highly undervalued these days. And I think by using repetition, you can actually get an edge on your peers. So when exactly will I be back? I don't know is the short answer. Just make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the first episode of 2017. I imagine it'll be sometime in 
early to mid-January. That's just a guess. Until next year, have a great holiday season, and I hope you have a fresh and sharpened perspective going into your new year. Thank you. Is Love Your Work helping you find your unique creative voice? Does it bring you the inspiration and motivation you need to become the creator and human you want to be? If so, please be a part of making this a special and nourishing and thoughtful show. Support the show on Patreon. You'll be an even bigger part of this show than you already are. If you contribute just a coffee a month, you'll be helping support the hosting and production of Love Your Work. Everyone has some unique creative gift to offer the world. Together, we can give people the tools they need to bring that work into the world. The world will be better off for it. Visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash This is a different kind of model for supporting the work that you love. The choice is yours. Vote with your dollars, put your money where your mind is, and keep Love Your Work going. Visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash As a thank you, you'll get early access, bonus content, and a discount on Love Your Work merchandise. Learn more at patreon.com slash cadavy. That's patreon.com slash K-A, D as in David, A, V as in Victor, Y. And if you can't support the show financially and you've listened to at least three episodes, can you do me a favor? Write a review on Apple Podcasts. You can consider it your donation to help support the show. Love Your Work is brought to you in part by our top Patreon supporters, such as Jeffrey Mason. This has been Love Your Work, and I'm David Cadavy. The theme music for this show is At Sea by Dorena from the album About Everything and More by arrangement with Deep Elm Records at deepelm.com. Love Your Work is a production of Cadavy, Inc.